There's certainly bankers, there are certainly psychologists, there are certainly uh, people in media. We hear a lot about Department of Children's Services workers, we hear a lot about police officers. The cult has reason to have their people in virtually every walk of life. Dr. Catherine Gould is a founding member of the Los Angeles Ritual Abuse Task Force, which advises the police and social workers on satanic cults. She is recognized internationally for her diagnosis and treatment of child victims of Satanism. Really scared to be a woman. Twelve-year-old Tara had no memories of satanic abuse until her parents' recent divorce. Her mother has brought her here to help establish that Tara's father is a Satanist who should be denied further visitation rights to his daughter. Actually having memories of some of the things that happened. My mom thought that maybe something had happened, and mm -hmm. I said, you mean like like being a sexual abuse or something? And she said, yeah, maybe. You thought that maybe there had been some sexual abuse? I know that it, it probably happened, but I don't really know exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. And I just thought I think that something like that might have happened. Mm -hmm. We came to Dr. Gould to find out more about that huge secret satanic network started doing this work, um, I thought that probably the motivation had really to do with sex and money, that these were people who were pedophiles. But I've come to feel over the course of doing this work for almost 10 years that the motivations are really much more sinister. The children are really being abused for purposes of indoctrination. So sex is not the motive, it's mind control. The ritual abuse of children is, at bottom, an attempt to develop human resources for the cult, develop children who have had so much abuse and so much mind control um, to which they've been subjected, that they will be maximally beneficial to the cult in a whole variety of areas. But with what possible aim? I think their aim is really to have as much control of you know, of this country and of other countries as they can possibly get. The FBI Academy of Virginia, which houses the National Center for the Analysis of Violent Crime. If any evidence of an organized criminal conspiracy were to come to light, the investigators here would be among the first to be consulted. Special Agent Ken Lanning. When I first heard about what has come to be called satanic ritual abuse, I was inclined to believe that it was going on. And the reason for that is I had been dealing with uh, the extreme aspects of violent, evil, criminal behavior for a long time. And I had no problem with the idea that people can be exceptionally cruel and vicious. But as time went on and the cases continued to come in, more and more cases, you were simply never able to find any real evidence, any real corroboration. I'm not aware of one single documented case in the United States and in other countries as well that I've consulted on and I've consulted on several hundred of them. In spite of the lack of any physical evidence, the story of the secret satanic conspiracy continues to be popularized by newspapers, magazines, radio, television, film, and many books, including some that have been specially written for children and others that supposedly describe the true experiences of those who have survived Satanism. And the further the story of this conspiracy has traveled from its American roots, the more lurid the details seem to become. Birmingham, England. I began to write. I had buggered. I had everything done to them that is humanly possible in a satanic, evil way. What happened to all those little children's bodies? They were dismembered. Jim Phillips is a practicing medical doctor who believes he has at least 140 patients who are victims of satanic abuse. Fifteen are currently under treatment. Virtually all our female patients have had their own babies sacrificed. They witness terrible, terrible things. Can I stop for me? I think together they've seen over a thousand murders. Just my patients. 10% of the population of Great Britain are practicing Satanists. You're talking about five and a half million Satanists? Yes. And what levels of society do you think are involved in this network? From the very top to the very bottom. When you say the very top, what exactly are you suggesting? I've heard reports from my patients that 
there are members of the royal family involved and also members of the cabinet. Harley Street, London, one of the most prestigious medical addresses in the world. Here, Vera Diamond practices as a therapist and advises police and social workers on the satanic conspiracy. We're apparently looking at international connections involving vast areas of crime from child pornography, snuff films, to big international arms deals. They take over people's minds in a vast way, which is very difficult to understand until you actually work with a number of people who have experienced this. There's something called mind control, where they take over people completely. We understand that it even involves um, very high security forces such as the CIA. And I'm informed it's as far as the royal family, and I'm told there are families higher than the royal family. But you can't possibly put that out. And I know you're running the camera, and I know you've got the sound on. What is your source of evidence for the extraordinary information you seem to have about this country? My patients. But how can you be sure that your patients are telling you the truth and not mixing dreams and fantasies with reality? There must be some truth in it. And we hear the same story time after time after time. But to be fair, from people who read the same literature, communicate with each other, and go to the same joint therapy session. That obviously is true. I, there was once a time when I naively believed that if you presented a certain amount of common sense and logic to these people, you could change their mind. And what I discovered is there's nothing you can say, there's no amount of common sense and logic or investigation that you can use. No matter what you come up with, they have an alternative explanation that is consistent with their belief in this conspiracy. And I got to the point after being involved in dozens of these cases that I said to myself, what's happening here? Either I'm dealing with the most sophisticated crime conspiracy that I've ever seen in my professional life, or there are some alternative explanations for what's going on here. Leading psychologists believe they have alternative explanations for satanic memories. Quite frankly, I have never yet seen anyone who claims to be a multiple personality who hasn't been in the hands of a therapist for some time. Professor Hart is Dean of the Graduate School of Psychology at the Fuller Seminary in Pasadena. These multiple personalities are created or brought into being or reinforced or shaped by therapists who are looking for them. The therapists are the ones who selectively reinforce these beliefs. Uh, yeah, but you, you, can, you can, I know from experience, many years experience as a therapist, I can get a patient to believe anything. I have tremendous power with, with patients. And most uh, multiple personality disorders are, are people who are highly suggestible, who have vivid imagination. They thrive on this sort of thing. And by reinforcing the therapist, in my opinion, sort of strengthens the crutch, strengthens the escapes, strengthens the avoidance. And that person is not being taught how to face reality with courage, but how to escape from reality by some um, fairy tale belief. In spite of these rebuttals, the belief in an international satanic conspiracy continues to gather strength with police and social workers taking up the cause. The judicial inquiry has opened into the Orkney child abuse affair, in which nine children were taken from their parents after allegations of ritual satanic abuse. All were later returned to their homes by the authorities, and the charges were dismissed as fundamentally flawed. That the in Nederland kinderen gedwongen worden bloed te drinken, seksuele handelingen te verrichten met lijken, and mee te werken aan babyoffers. The fifth estate. One case of child sexual abuse grows into a frightening, widespread scenario of ritual cult activity. It happened in California. Children are questioned again and again for weeks and months, their lives damaged. In the U.S. and Canada, there's a hunt-on for satanic cults, and innocence often seems to offer no defense.